Many people ask in the comment section whether once you upgrade to a graphics card from the integrated Vega 7, you will experience a bottleneck. You may assume that the 5600G is a significantly worse CPU than similarly priced TPUs because you get the outstanding Vega 7 graphics in the package. This train of thought makes sense when you consider that the Vega 7 performs about as well as a $100 graphics card. You may conclude that, therefore, you lose $100 worth of CPU performance. But this is not the case, and I will show you exactly why it isn't so. I collected data using the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark, and we'll look at the results in a minute. I test with an RTX 3070 for two reasons. Reason number one, it's about the highest end card people will be looking to pair with a 5600G. So if you're in the clear here, any card that's not quite as beastly will not be a concern. And the reason number two, I was able to get one by removing it from my girlfriend's setup. Don't worry, she was no longer using it. I decided. Okay, enough with the jokes. Let's look at two CPUs and three configs in the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark. The stock 5600G, the 5600X and an overclocked 5600G at 4.7 GHz. The overclocked 5600G can beat an average 5600X in Cinebench and is paired with faster RAM. I got the results for the 5600X from the channel Life Hunters, and they conveniently tested all the same settings with an RTX 3070. I overclocked my 3070 for both the stock 5600G and the OC 5600G, so we get to see the maximum possible difference between them. And that worked out perfectly for the benefit of this test. I ran each test three times, but I only have a single run result for the 5600X. That's not a problem. The Cyberpunk benchmark is remarkably consistent. At 1080p on the low preset, the stock 5600G scored 144 FPS, while the OC 5600G and the 5600X scored 162. So the 5600X scored about 13% higher than the stock 5600G. Here, the stock 5600G is holding back the RTX 3070 because you can see that the 3070 can push more frames with faster CPUs. But then on the medium preset, that difference shrinks to 5%. The bottleneck is starting to vanish. The 5600G trails the 5600X and the OC 5600G slightly. And then it happened. On the high preset, my slightly faster 3070 flexes its muscles. Both 5600Gs got higher than the 5600X and the OC 5600G has a lead over to stock 5600G. But it's below 2%. On the Ultra preset, both 5600G scored within margin of error, and they handily beat the 5600X by almost 5%, afforded by the faster RTX 3070. It's also worth noting that the OC 5600G and stock 5600G scored within the margin of error at 1440p low. Therefore, I saw no reason to test the medium preset. Today, we've learned that an ever so slightly faster GPU makes a more meaningful difference than a slightly faster CPU at least when you talk about modern AAA games. And if there's any game that we should use as an indicator for CPU and GPU requirements of upcoming games, it's most definitely Cyberpunk 2077 patch 1.5. I'm not saying there's no benefit at all to having an even beefier CPU. I'm sure the highest end CPU could squeeze a handful of frames more out of the RTX 3070. The point is that the return on a better CPU diminishes extremely quickly once you push up the graphics settings. But there is one more argument I want to make why the 5600G will be a solid CPU throughout the entire console generation. The Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 have a CPU similar to the Zen 2 based Ryzen 7 3700, an 8 core 16 thread processor. Compared to the 5600G, the R7 3700 puts up worse numbers in lightly threaded applications and slightly better numbers in fully threaded applications. The 5600G and 3700 are about evenly matched. We will soon have a 100 games or so tested video on the RTX 3070 with the Ryzen 5600G. But first, all the OC and tuning videos will go up. 